Well, it was quite the rainy day, and so I hope that you had a good day, despite it being wet and kind of yucky outside. But I'm sure we're going to have beautiful weather coming back. Tonight's book is by Kevin O'Malley, and it is called Herbert Fieldmouse, The Secret Agent. This story I hope you will enjoy, as I hope that you've enjoyed every story. Hang in there as we finish up school. Continue, guys, to do your Learn From Home. Reach out to your teachers. They're continuing to put out phenomenal work. And, as always, wash your hands and be kind. But you are ready for a story, and I got it for you. So, without further ado, Herbert Fieldmouse, Secret Agent, on Mr. Eric Reads. I got a message that I was to go and see the Queen. Herbert Fieldmouse, she said. Take this message to Baron Von Gouda. It's top secret. <laughs> so there I was on another secret mission. It was cold. It was dark. I knew I was being followed by the evil Dr. Whiskers. The train station was quiet. A little too quiet. I made my way to the train, and for some reason, I had that feeling you get when you don't study for a test, but you tell your mom that you did. Maybe it was my frame of mind. Maybe it was the cheese, but something, something smelled rotten. Wait a minute. I knew that smell. It was sour milk. I turned and I was too late. We passed through a tunnel and Dr. Whiskers got the jump on me. We struggled and I had let my guard down. Dr. Whiskers grabbed the box. I took up the chase following him on top of a racing locomotive, but I was too late. The foul-smelling Dr. Whiskers had escaped, and with him the Queen's secret message. Maybe I should have been a church mouse, but hey, I'm a secret agent. It's a job, and it pays the rent. Anyhow, I had to get the letter back, so I headed down the other side of the tracks to the scratching post called Little Parisian Town. I went to see Big Tabby, the fat cat who runs Little Parisian Town. Where is Dr. Whiskers, I asked. <laughs> and why should I tell you, field mouse? Questioned Big Tabby. Because if you don't, I'll close down this little illegal catnip operation of yours so fast, it'll make your tail spin. That got Big Tabby's tongue moving. He told me so much about Dr. Whiskers' place that it felt like I was talking to some sort of evil travel agent. Anyhow, I headed down the pier. I was looking for a Siamese cat named Pasha and her boat, the Quivering Whisker. The place wasn't hard to find. I went into Pasha's shop. I nosed around for a while and then rang the bell for assistance. A voice behind me said, May I help you? I spun around and there stood the most beautiful cat I had ever seen. She must have thought I was okay too because she agreed to have dinner with me that night. After the important stuff was out of the way, we talked about business. I need your boat to get to the evil island of Dr. Whiskers. Are you sure you really want to go? I've taken many to that island, but I have never brought anyone back. Pasha purred. Thanks for the warning, but I've got a job to do. Later that night, we headed for the evil island of Dr. Whiskers. The side of the castle gave me the creeps. Maybe I should have listened to Pasha after all, but I had to get the secret message back. 
It's my job. Don't go, whispered Pasha. Wait for me, I said. You won't come back. You won't come back, she cried. Wait for me, I said. I started to climb and I looked back down. Pasha was gone. What a fortress. I was able to pick the lock with my tail. It was easy. Too easy. Once inside, I crept down a long hallway. I got the feeling, you know, like I was being watched. I went through the second door, mouse traps, and in the center of the room was the secret message. I worked my way across the room when suddenly the lights went out. I could smell sour milk. Open the box, hissed Dr. Whiskers. He could see me, but I couldn't see him. He had cat vision. Anything you say, I replied. But this time I was ready for his trickery. I had loaded the box with tennis balls. I opened it, grabbed the queen's letter, and threw the balls into the air. Mousetrap snapped like peanut brittle. I headed out the way I came in. I emptied a bag of kitty litter by the door. Cats love that stuff, you know. They can't stop themselves from pawing at it. I crossed the bridge and suddenly back to my escape route when I smelled the sour milk. It was Dr. Whiskers going somewhere, he hissed. I used my last secret weapon, a toy mouse filled with catnip. I dangled it in front of his eyes and then tossed it off the bridge. Without a thought, he took the bait and went over the side of the bridge. I raced back to my rope and climbed down. You know, cats, though, have nine lives, and I smelled Dr. Whiskers again. Too bad about Pasha. It looked like I was trapped. Suddenly, there was a roar of an engine. It was Pasha. I jumped for the boat just as Dr. Whiskers jumped for me. Splash! A wet cat. Thanks, Pasha, I said. I was falling in love with that kitten. Who would have guessed a cat and a mouse? Anyhow, Pasha dropped me off at Baron von Gouda's place, and I delivered the secret message, which read, Dear Baron, you left your umbrella here after lunch. Shall I return it? Regards, the Queen. Huh, some big secret message, huh? I'll tell you from, from now on, being a church mouse sounds pretty good. The end. That again was Herbert Field Mouse Secret Agent by Kevin O'Malley here on Mr. Eric Reads. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that tale. Please continue to check in with me every day where we'll have a new story. Take care of yourselves, be kind, and wash your hands. Bing. See you later.